All right, so we got this beaver hide that Austin just skinned. I'm gonna go ahead and flesh it. Just to let you know up front, um, I use a Necker knife. I started buying fur about 15 years ago, and that's what I bought when I first started buying fur. I'm not saying it's the best knife on the market, but it's what I'm used to. I've probably done at least 10,000 hides with it, and I'm used to it, so that's what I use. So if you're wondering what the best fleshing knife on the market is, it's the one that you use the most. That's all I can tell you. I'll tell you why I like the fle the uh, Necker knife. You got a sh you got a one edge that's sharp because sometimes you have to cut the meat, and you got one side that's dull where you push the meat. And whenever you're fleshing animals, ten percent of the time you're cutting, but ninety percent of the time you're fleshing. So I like to have a dull side because I'm about as careful as an ox in a china house. So. I prefer to have the doll side to flesh with. So, got this beaver hide on the uh, fleshing beam. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna push as much meat off as I can. The more you push and the less you cut, the less chance you have of nicking the uh, leather. So, let me go ahead and get to, get to work on this. See, I'm just using the doll side, and as you can see, most of the meat is coming off. I'm gonna keep on spinning it. Bring the hide to you. Don't reach any farther than what you have to. I'm just gonna go around it and knock off all the high spots. And then I'll go back and do a little bit more of the careful cutting. Now on this tail, Sometimes the tail gets pretty tough on a beaver. That's where you gotta use your sharp edge, and I'll show you here in a second. So on a beaver, on the back, the lower back where the tail is, you get into that heavy gristle. That's where you gotta use the sharp edge. And you just put it nice and flat and you shave it off. See how I'm doing that? I'm shaving it off with a sharp edge. And as soon as I get all that off, I'll go back to the dull edge and start to push again. back to the doll edge, get as much as I can off of it. A little bit of toughness here on the bottom, I'll shave that off with the sharp edge. Go back to the doll. There's a little bit of a nick there. I didn't do that. That's probably where the beaver was fighting with something. Not my fault. I can't grow them, I can only catch them. So sometimes you can't avoid it. Still using the dull edge. Not that difficult as you can see. Just gotta practice. Keep on going around it until you get all the loose meat off of it. This is the head area. Let's talk about the head area. If you're gonna, if you're fleshing this beaver to sell on the market, uh, this nose area, these whiskers, you wanna cut those off. Now, if you're gonna get it tanned to hang on your wall, you'll probably wanna leave that on, okay? But we're, we're selling it for the market. So I'm gonna take my sharp edge, I'm gonna run right down the uh, whiskers and nose and shave that right off, because that has no value on the uh, fur market. Get all this gristle and fat off of its head. You can, you don't have to be quite as careful on the head. If you nick it, it's not gonna hurt the fur value because they're not using any fur off the head anyway on the fur market. Let's get it cleaned as best you can. You got, even though they're not going to use the, the 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 face area, you still want to get it cleaned as best you can because you know if it don't if you don't get it cleaned, the leather won't dry, it'll taint. So you got to get all that off of it, even though the face ain't worth anything. So this hide, let me see, let me touch it up. Let me go through a few spots that I missed. There's that. All right. 
nice and clean. All the fats off of it. And then the next segment, uh, I'll let Austin hoop it. We use hoops here to, to stretch beaver hides. Some people use pieces of plywood. We use hoops because we buy a lot of fur, we catch a lot of fur. And, um, you know, my garage is pretty big, but still we run out of space. So we use hoops because we can save space. Um, just a quick note about whether or not you should use beaver hoops or plywood. There's pros and cons to both. The, um, on beaver hoops, the, the pros are it's probably a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. And the pros are on hoops that it probably dries a little bit faster. The fur might look a little bit fluffier. Uh, but the negatives on hoops are uh, sometimes you can't make them quite as big. If they're a small to if they're a small size beaver, sometimes your hoops are too big for the small beaver to fit on. So if you're wanting to maximize speed and quality of the fur, hoops are better. If you're wanting to maximize size, um, wood is better. Um, and then in addition to that, if you have hoops, you can just hang them from the ceiling and it saves space. So there's good and bad to everything, but we we decided that hoops were best for us. And uh, that's how you flush a beaver in the next second of the video. Austin's going to hoop it for you. Thanks. On the next one. Hey, Austin. That one's so small too. We've got a really small hide right here. And because we don't use plywood, um, you're having to use a hoop. And whenever I was fleshing that, I was telling people that if it's a really small hide, it's better to do on plywood. Uh, can you explain to people why? Because you're doing a really small hide there. So the, the biggest issue with hoops is, like he was talking about earlier, um, uh, whenever you're using plywood, it doesn't matter. The, the, like you've got you've got your your cutouts you've got your dimensions marked out on your plywood it doesn't matter what size your beaver is it's a chunk of wood you've got tacks or you've got um, staples you're going to get it on there regardless it doesn't matter but a hoop is like a spring and you can only compress a spring so far before it won't it won't go anymore so our hoops most of them will do up to a 70 inch beaver some of them don't some of them only go up to like 66 or 67 inches um, this is one of our one of our smaller hoops, but as you can see, if you look down at the hoop, it's not. It, it, this is not the way a hoop is supposed to look. Um, it, it is still going to work, but this is not the way you're supposed to do it. We had to compress it so far that we had to to do the improper technique. Um, but hopefully, on the next one, we can show you the way that it's supposed to look.